people are here. That looks good. Let me share my screen. Okay. Good. Okay. So uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to um, count our um, let me make this bigger so people can see it and basically so I can see it. All right. So I have two, four, six, eight, two, five, six, eight, nine. Hello, four, red, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen, and orange, three. Okay, so everybody's going to need to tell me how many of each color they have. Um, Uh, starting with blue and then going forward. Um, uh, so who's counted theirs yet already? Anybody? Uh, counting now. Okay. <laughs> Okay, um, Okay, so people have, are starting to give me values here. I feel like I'm doing an election. All right, so five blue, uh, six green, four yellow, 20 red, and four orange. Blue, 10 green, seven yellow, 18 red, and three orange. Where are we getting this from? Am I missing something? Uh, counting our um, Sour Patch Kids. Oh, right, right, right. So you just open a box of Sour Patch Kids and then figure out what you got. So you have all the orange. Five, eleven, eight, nineteen, and seven. On mine, you wrote one green instead of eleven. Oh, thank you. And that should be thirteen orange. Yeah. 
So those of you who just joined, we're just counting up our um, Sour Patch Kids. And then I'm putting them into a spreadsheet so we can check the distributions and see are they evenly distributed. And I'm going to say no just by looking at the data right now, but we can prove it. And so you can just put them right in the chat. Seven, nine, ten, thirteen, eight, five, eight, nine, six, six. Six, twelve, seven, ten, twelve. Three, fourteen, nine, six, four, seven, five, five, oops, two, three, seven, five, five. So I need, I think five more, because I'm in there, so. So does everybody put in their values, like, just in case you forgot some, that's fine. All right, well, we'll stop there and I'll I get some more, I get some more. So these are the, oops, I got one more here. Seven, eight, five, thirteen, six. Okay, so these are our observed values. This is what we, here, I'll make, I'll zoom in on this. This is what we found, okay, from all of our, I think, 12 boxes of uh, Sour Patch Kids. And so what we want to do is we want to find, I don't want that one, home. And I'm using Excel because it's bigger to see and that takes the numbers easier. We can do this with our calculator as well. Um, it's just that we have to tally them all up and then put the numbers in and count them. So this here just counted them, everybody's, and totaled them up. See, I had them sum up each column, so uh, as things get added, this thing observe, observation went up. So what we need to do is we need to find out how many total things there were, and we just do that by adding them all up. Now, the expected value depends upon what they say the distribution is. Um, with... Uh, you know, Skittles... Um, they say that, uh, so here are the um, Skittles proportions, all right, um, but there's, but Skittle, the company that makes it, says um, 
they're 20 percent so they, they say that skittles are evenly distrib distributed but m m's as we know have a different distribution and they are here 24 percent uh, 20 percent uh, 16, 14, 13, 13. Um, but they stopped printing what the distribution was uh, only because um, what happened was every school that ever t taught statistics in the chi-square would then test it and see if it was right. And because M&Ms are made at two different um, facilities, they and each one has a different distribution, overall they have this distribution, but um, at each facility, they have a different distribution. So they're like, well, which part of the country did you buy it in? And that will tell you you're going to get a different distribution. So, um, and now that they have all kinds of colors and stuff like that, you can get anything you want. It changes even more. Um, the other thing, the, the other one that I've done is uh, Fruit Loops color distribution. And oops, somebody just pinged me. Ah, got one more, okay. Three tab, three tab, three tab, 23 tab, six. And so Fruit Loops distribution also has an odd distribution. Um, I think I actually have it in the classroom. Uh, and we can work. So here's the color distribution for Fruit Loops. 20% um, orange, 18% red, 16% uh, blue, 14% green, 17% yellow, 10% purple, and 5% of them are broken. Um, so that's interesting. Um, and counting the broken ones kind of made a problem because it's like, well, do I call it as a color, do I call it as a broken, or do I put them in um, uh, together? So we can use those things there as you know defining. Well, we're going to assume, like the, unless they tell us a distribution, we can always just assume, the, the, the common thing is just to assume that these are evenly distributed colors and then go from there. And so if they're evenly distributed, we have our observed values and we just total them up. And then we have our expected values. So our expected values would be some kind of percentage uh, of these things, depending upon what they say. Um, and here I'll put the distribution. So this would be the expected, the stated distribution. And we're going to say that these are all the same. So I have one, two, three, four, five. So 20%. So these are all 20%, but they could be any distribution that we want. Now, to find the expected distributions, the expected values that we're supposed to see, we just take the distribution that they say and multiply it by the total. Now, so that means we don't always get whole numbers, and that's okay. And if you know anything about Excel, the dollar signs just say lock that in place so that when I drag down, it doesn't change. And so I can add those up, and you'll see that those are the same numbers, okay? So the next column that we deal with, John Josh, okay. The next column we deal with is our observed minus our expected. Now I just shortened it to O and E just because it's easier. Right, here, let me just center those just because it looks nicer. And they're not kind of, not here, I'm just gonna shorten that to dist.
Yeah, that's better. All right. So O minus C just takes means I take the observed value and subtract off the expected value. So that's easy enough. And the reason we don't use this and we call this the chi squared method, we hear we square these because if I were to add these together, I get zero. So we because the we're taking the totals and these these total things add up to the same number, or they close enough depending on rounding. Um, they're going to be zero, so we have to square them to get rid of our negatives. So notice some things are way overestimated, and some things are way underestimated. So we want to square those things. So we want to square this number so we can get rid of these negative signs and then deal with what they are. So equals this and. In Excel, this little caret here just means raising to a power. So, and we get that, and we can again copy this over. And so now notice we get this sum. All right, we have this sum thing that we're going to deal with. Then, and it's not this sum either that we need, we need actually this sum here. Uh, so, this one is equal to this number divided by our expected value equals this divided by this. And we drag that down. OK. And then we notice we get ratios. OK. And so this is one of these things where we're going to get a really large number. OK. Um, because we're finding the ratio. These are huge numbers divided by num you know big numbers. So we get you know we can get huge values here. And we still are interested in small values because what this says is that this here is our chi this this value here is our chi square value. So we've actually calculated the the um, the value that we the test statistic. This is the chi square test statistic. And then we put it into our table or our chart. Uh, or our, you know, and look for the um, p-value to find out whether or not we should um, the uh, null hypothesis is you know valid or not. And the null hypothesis is always is this true? You know, the distribution that we've been given is right, and the alternative is that it's not right. Like the data doesn't fit the distribution. So this. And if we have, we can find the p-value of this, right? We can come here and find the p-value uh, equals square distribution of this number uh, with the degrees of freedom and. Is it still? I think it's just a number of things minus one. One, two, three, four, five minus one is four. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, cumulative. Yeah, let me go to uh, this one. It's easier. I can see the. Formula chi square. Okay, x is that number. Degrees of freedom is that number. And cumulative is a true false thing. It always assumes false. I mean, so. Um, So zero, always put a zero there if you're using um, Excel. And so it says that it's 4.8 times 12 to the, times 10 to the negative 12th power. So this is going to be a number that has, I want this in uh, number form. And I'm going to bring out the zeros there. So this is the value. This is the p-value. 
This is the chi-square test statistic. This is the p-value. So we can we compare this to alpha, and we're like, is this less than 0 0.05? Anyone? Anyone think this is bigger or smaller than 0 0.05? Smaller. Much smaller, right? So, so we then re reject the null hypothesis that this is the correct distribution, and therefore we assume that it's they're not evenly distributed, which is kind of what we looked at when we when I looked at the values. We're like, oh, we seem to have a lot of reds, you know, um, in our groups, and like when we looked here. We can just see most people had a lot more reds than everybody else. Only a few people even had um, red wasn't their highest one, okay, out of the group. And those people that didn't have red as their highest group ha color had green as their highest color. So those are the two, you know, we can see most common colors in the, the list. I mean, some people had way more reds than everything else, you know, like full boxes of reds. Um, so we can assume that they're probably not evenly distributed. And we can go look to see, is there a, um, uh, what are these things, Sour Patch Kids? Um, color distribution. People always study these things for chi-squared. It's kind of interesting. Uh, play. Let's see what they found out for color distribution. And so here's their observed values and their expected values. Like they assumed, again, uh, they would be evenly distributed. So they didn't know. Um, so if we don't know, we assume that they are evenly distributed. Um, and it as a present, nobody seems to have an idea, an exact value. Let's see if it's in here. Uh, they do not mention the color distribution. No, nope. okay. So because they don't mention it, we we always just assume that they're evenly distributed, unless we can find something else. We now say, yeah, no, they're not evenly distributed. That's all we can tell. We don't all know. Blue. What, what was that? I said all of mine are blue. All yours are blue. <laughs> That's funny. You got a you got a bad batch, <laughs> or somebody came in it came in during the middle of the night and ate all the other colors. Or, uh, Sean. Yeah, and no, I'm just saying I got, I got about twenty blue. Yeah, that, I mean it happened. So um, we look to see, you know, are these things. Do they fit the distribu distribution? And that's what the chi-square does for us, is we just test the distribution that we've been given from a, a specific thing from a population and then look to see, does it affect another population? Or we look to see, are these things evenly distributed? Or, um, and it really, it's just for fun, because you know there's no recourse if they're not. Well, I mean, unless you really hate or red, um, and you really like the yellow ones, you know, then you, know, you see why people like the yellow ones, because there's so few of them. Um, but it allows you to test those things, okay? And that's what the chi-square does. It, it, it takes this information and finds it. So if I were to do this on the calculator, no, I want you on this side so I can see it. All right, clear, no, exit, quit. There. Okay, so I'd go into the calculator and I would I could put this data in in statistics. I don't know what I was trying to do. All right, quit. Clear this. Clear this. And I can do each one of these things that are in there. I have my observed, which is 62, 104, 81, 
157, 77. And then I can total this up. Like there's an ability to, to find this. I can say, okay, well, we're going to go to, um, where's the math one? List. Yep, there's math. And we can sum these. So we can go to five. And we can tell we want to sum list one. And then we're going to divide this by one, two, three, four, five. OK, and so that gives me my value, my expected value. If I had a percentage, then I would you know, take this number. So it's list one times, you know, you know I would probably put the these 20 percents in the first list. And then um, I could then multiply list one by list two, and this would be list two. Then I can multiply those and find list three by that way. So there's all kinds of ways I can do this, but because I know that I'm assuming these are evenly distributed, I had to add them all up and find that number. So then I'm just going to copy it down. All right, and then each column here is going to do the same thing. I'm going to come up to the top and I'm going to um, subtract the two. Now the reason I'm doing this is because some calculators, the older calculators don't, the newer calculators have a goodness of fit test. The older calculators don't. So we actually have to do this by hand for the older calculators. So this is going to be list one minus list two. And that gives me those, those match. This next one says I'm going to I'm going to come here and I'm going to square this. So this is going to be list three squared. I get those numbers. The next one says I'm going to take list four here and divide by list two. So this is list four divided by list two. And luckily, I'm done because there's only six lists that you can put in your calculator. And so um, you could do this and smoosh this all into one thing, into one column. You could take do all this stuff as one thing. You'd have to tell it it's going to be C2 uh, minus, you know, it's going to be li this list minus this list squared divided by this list. You can do all of that in one step, and that's perfectly fine. Or you can do it in the, you know, five steps that we need. Um, but luckily, we, like I said, luckily we only have six columns. So like if this is a distribution, then I would need that as a separate piece. And so I'd fill up all my columns. Um, but now I'm going to take this thing here and I'm going to add it up just like I did here. So I'm going to quit out of this. Again, I'm going to go to stat and math. And I'm going to sum, which is number five. And I'm going to sum up list five. And it gives me the same number. So now I have my chi-square distribution, which I can then find in distributions. So bars all the way down. The chi-square CDF, because this is a cumulative thing. I have my lower value, which is um, 0. OK. Actually, no, sorry, it's this number here. It's this. Uh, Second answer. And my upper value is infinity, 1 e to the 99th power. The degrees of freedom is 4 because, again, it's 1 less than this. And I paste. And it comes out a little off, you know, like it's a little different from mine, but it's close enough. I have 10, I have 12 decimal places of 0. So, um, there, that part's the same because <laughs> this goes to, you know, so I mean, it, it, at this point, it really doesn't matter. But again, I'm still going to compare this to alpha. So if you have the old calculators, this is how you have to do it. If you have the new calculators, which is why I tell people to download this, they go to stat, tests, and one of the tests that they have is the, they have two chi-square tests. 
This is the one that tests um, certain things, and this is because there's three chi-square tests. So, um, <laughs> one of them, the one of them is for independence. One of them is for goodness of fit, and the third one has to do with um, uh, uh, correlation. But we don't deal with that. We don't do that one. So um, we just do the these two tests. So we're going to do the goodness of fit test. And it asks us, well, where is our things? Well, our, our observed are in list one. Our expected are in list two. The degrees of freedom are four. And we calculate. And it gives us our values. Here's our p-value. Here's our degrees of freedom. And here's you know all the cells. This is how they got that. This is these numbers right here. So it actually calculates all those. This is, says contributing factors. So these are all the contributing numbers that were added and found. So that's how they got their values. That's how they got this 57 is they found all of these columns, these values here, and added them up. So this will give you all of your little pieces okay, much quicker. So Hopefully you have the newer calculator because you don't otherwise you have to do it this way. And so you can do this by hand, like I said with um, Excel, you can do it by hand in the calculator. But whichever way you do it, it's kind of a pain because it's a long process, uh, especially if you have lots of choices. But um, to do it on the calculator with the goodness fit test, it's just you put in your observed, you put your expected in, and then you tell it where those things are, and it will find it. So um, that's how that works. All right. Um, now I'm going to sh show them to you in the homework. Um, and then the other one as well, um, because this is another thing that you've probably never seen before. Um, so that's how we do this one. So this one here has a different distribution. Okay. This is the distribution. This is the percentage of people who are 15 and older. Um, and of males, and 31.3% have never been married, 56.1% have been married, 2.5% are widowed, and 10.1% are divorced. So um, those are our populations. And then they sample 400 people, 400 males, between the ages of 18 and 24. All right, And they get this population. All right, and they want to find the expected value. So the expected frequency, the expected uh, values are just this, these percentages times 400. So it's 31.3 times 400 divided by 100 because that's a percent. And they get. Oh, I did minus 400, oops. Times 400, that's better. And so you get this number and you do it for each one of these things, all right? And that's how they got all of their values. And then so we have our frequency and our expected values. Those we would then put into our calculator and do the goodness of fit test, depending upon which method we have to do. The Null and alternatives are always the same, that the data distribution, so the, the known distribution, matches our sample, we think is right, and that it's wrong. So it's actually not true. Okay, and Those are the two things we're trying to test, always. The degrees of freedom, like I said, are always one less than how many things there are, because it, that's what usually, like, we're going to get into a couple, another, uh, uh, one other uh, degrees of freedom, two other dis degrees of freedom, which are a little different, um, but we'll deal with those in a second. You know, not too big of a deal. Um, but it's so it's just n things minus one. So that's how they got three. What is the distribution? Well, they only give you two of them. They give you t's or they give you chi-square. Well, since this is a chi-square distribution, that's easy enough. This is the degrees of freedom here. So we had 
chi-square with three degrees of freedom. What is the test statistic? That's where we use the goodness of fit test or the other one. And like I said, unfortunately, um, if I go all the way back to the beginning here, it doesn't keep this information. I have to calculate it over and over again. So I'd put in my values here, you know, 139, 239, 220, and delete that one. Delete that one there. And so it doesn't change anything else. If I do it in Excel, here I can put my percentages in. Thirty-one point three, six point one, two point five, ten point one, and delete. And then I can put my observed values in. Um, one thirty-nine, two thirty-nine, two and twenty, and delete. And so it gives me my correct things all the way through. And I'm going to just delete this one because they aren't a thing. There. So I get all of my correct values. Huh. How is that one right? Oh, that should be zero. Okay, so it's rounding, that's why. Okay, um, and so you might get stuff like this where this isn't quite zero, just because these things have been rounded. So there's decimal places in them um, in here, and so the rounding is off just a little bit, so that's what happens, and now we get those not quite perfectly valued numbers. But this gives me my test statistic which is fine to duplicate decimal places. So everything works out great. I can also, like I said, do it in my calculator and get that. So again, if I were to do this, I have my expected values here. Um, 125.2, 10, and 40.4. And delete that one. And so if I were to do my goodness of fit test, list one, list two, this is now degrees of freedom of three. So you make sure you put that in there, right? And then calculate. I have now have my, here's my test. Here's my test statistic, those are the same. And again, these are just off slightly. Um, but it's still so many decimal places um, that it's not so bad. And this rounds to three anyway, so does that. So they're pretty close. At that point, it's negligibly different. What is the p-value? They both round to 0 0.003. So, um, and then what does it mean? Well, it's the probability of getting this distribution if the null hypothesis was true. Always, that's what it means. Um, so, so because it's so small, you know, we compare it to, here's our graph, and it's always going to be this graph here, okay, where our p-value is over here. Because again, this is between, this is, Outside of the between, this is greater than, you know. So this is the only one that's left less than. 
And notice it isn't normally, it isn't a normal curve anymore. It's kind of close, but there's a lot of skew. And the reason there's a lot of skew is because these numbers tend to happen. Um, our test statistics tend to go really, really, really far out, and they can't go any further than zero. So we'll never have stuff over here. Um, and so there's a very short space that this could be on this side, and this can go on forever. So it's always going to be skewed uh, to the right. Again, what is our alpha? Our alpha was told to us. And again, if it wasn't, then it's always 0.05. So uh, yeah, right here, 5%. We reject an all hypothesis because it is alpha is greater than the p-value, and that means that um, there's enough evidence to s assume that the distributions of marital status is not what they say it is, that this isn't true, okay, for at least this population, for the 18 to 24-year-olds, which makes sense because it makes perfect sense that there weren't a lot of widowers, um, and um, that more people are not married. You know, because again, they're 18 to 24. So, um, although surprisingly, there's a high number here. Um, but it would make sense that there aren't a lot of widows at that point. So, this one is just like this one, except you have more values. And they tell you that they're evenly distributed. So, if they're evenly distributed, it's like our Skittles problem where the distributions are the same. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things. So this is just one out of seven. 100%. Um, so it's going to be that value, you know, 0.14, and it continues on forever. But we just take the 132 and divide it by one point, uh, one divided by seven, and do each of these. And we take sorry, we take this thing here and divide it by seven, and it'll give us the same number all the way down, because we had 1,419 people. So seven doesn't go in there nicely, so that's why we're going to get this decimal at the end. All right, and that's okay. You can have not whole people in this. This is the only place where that makes sense. Everything else is exactly like this previous problem. Then there's these two, which are uh, the other type of chi-square test. And what we have is we're looking to see, are they independent? We're testing for independence. And um, what they're saying is we're looking to see, is the type of car you have dependent or independent of the size of the family you have? And so they make a matrix. Right? We have a contingency table. That's what we call them in chapter two. Um, and this one everybody has on their in their calculator, so I'm not going to state that. So we go to our matrix, which is this the probably the first time you've ever turned it on, and it's right here above the uh, x to the negative one, all right. And we're going to put in a matrix. So I'm going to there's no even there's not even a way to clear these. <laughs> so once you make them, they're there, um, and you just change what they are. So we have a four by four matrix. This one is a one, two, three, four, five by four matrix. All right. And so it's probably, like I said, this is the first time you've ever done anything with matrices, I'm assuming. And so we're just going to edit it. We have to, again, it's weird that edit is the last thing. So we're going to come in here, and we're going to tell that this is a 4 by 4. So this here is the number of rows. This is the number of columns. So when I hit 4 by 4, it adds a, makes a fourth column. And there are four rows of data. So then I just put my numbers in, 19, 4. And then when I hit Enter, it just moves over to the next one. 34. And then when I get to the end of the row, it goes down to the next, get the end of the row goes down to the next row. So uh, 20, 9, 70, 80, 80, 49, 99, 91, 20, 31, 69, 71. 
Now, um, when we do this, we have to make sure that all we care about is at the end, and so we care about these, these are right. And then when we find our expected values, it's going to actually calculate them, and I'm going to show you how it's done, but we're, again, we're never going to do it by hand, so um, because it's just awful. Let me grab this um, snipping tool. Okay, so we have our table, all right? Now, to calculate the chi-square, let me place the image, all right, we have to find the grand total and all of the column and row totals. So we have to actually add on to this thing. Okay, so we have, we'd have to add down and we would have to add across each column and each row. So this is um, 80 minus 2 is what's in red? Uh, 78. And this is that's 100, that's 98, and that is, um, oh, here, let me grab a calculator. That's what I have one. I'll grab one. 34 plus 49 plus 48 plus 31. 163. Plus 70 plus 99 plus 69. 279. Four plus eighty plus ninety one plus seventy one two seventy six and then we add the ones across nineteen plus thirty four plus 41 plus 34, 128. So there's a reason we, we like technology, because like this here itself just takes forever. 20 plus 49 plus 70 plus 80, 18. Plus forty nine plus ninety nine plus ninety one two fifty eight and then last row we have twenty plus thirty one plus sixty nine plus seventy one one ninety one. Now we have to find the grand total. I'll make that in green. I probably should have made those a different color too, but uh, 128 plus 18 plus tubes, 258 plus 191, 796. And we'll just make sure that that's right by adding these across. 78 plus 163 plus 279 plus 276 
of a 96. Yay, okay. So, so far so good. Now, to find the expected value, we take the total of the row times the total of the column and divide by the grand total. So I have 128 times 78 divided by 796. And that comes out to be 12.54. And I do that for each one of these. Then I find the difference. And then I multiply them. So um, just be, so that's why they created technology. Because like you A first have to find all of the expected values of each of these, and then find the differences of all those, square them, take the uh, divide by the expected values, and then add all those up, and that's going to give you your chi squared test. Or you can come to your calculator and say, okay, I've put everything in this matrix. Go to stat, go to test, come down to chi-square test, which you all have, and hit enter. And where is the observed in A, where is the expected in B? Now, I didn't put anything in B, and that's okay. I mean, I have something in B already, but it's going to change it. It's going to calculate matrix B for me. It's going to calculate all of these expected values. And I'm going to hit calculate, and it's going to give me a value. And it finds the chi-square value and the uh, p distribution, the, the p value, and the degrees of freedom of 9. Now, this one here has a, the degrees of freedom, because this is a contingency table, there's rows and columns. We have to take how many rows there are, minus one, times how many columns there are, minus one, and multiply them together. So I had four rows, that's minus one is three, four columns, minus one is three, three times three is nine. So that's how it finds the degrees of freedom. And if we go back to the matrix, Notice I now have a four by four column, and I can look at it, and I can come in and edit it to see it, and it finds the 12.54, and then it would find this one, and it found this one, and it found this. So it calculated all of those cells for me. Now, the only thing I care about is, is any of these cells less than five? If they're less than five, I can't, it's not a valid test. So we just have to make sure that nothing here was less than five. If things are less than five, then you would just ask some more people to, until you got enough of those of a single cell to be not less than five. So you you know, oh, we have we don't have enough. We may ask you know 20 more people, and then you know hopefully this goes up you know by one you know, and then the expected value would go up you know by five. So that's all we needed to do is we need to just we'll do, we would just need to sample more people when we did this. But so that's all we care about. The second matrix is is everything here greater than five? And as long as everything's greater than five, it's a valid test. So where's where's my thing here? Okay. So um, these null and alternatives again are always going to be the same the null is that um, they're independent that means that the size of your car has nothing to do with the, the size of your family and that they're dependent means that the size of the car does have something to do with the size of your family which probably makes a lot more sense because you know there's um, I mean yes people have more than one car but if you have eight people, if you have a mother and a father and six kids, you're probably not driving a subcompact car. You're probably driving some kind of van, you know. Whereas if you have, um, if it's just you, you can drive whatever kind of car you want. You know, it doesn't have any effect. But so notice, even still, people with five plus people only had a subcompact car. Maybe that's all they could afford. Uh, maybe that was the, you know. It's, you know, maybe that was her second car. So, like, the father drives a small car and the mother drives a van. <laughs> you know, that, that's the minivan. So, um, you know, you might have more than one car. So those things do affect uh, what you're looking at. What was the degrees of freedom? Well, like I said, it's the number of rows times the number of columns. 
each subtract off one. Which test is it? It's the chi-square test and just whatever your degrees of freedom are. What is the test statistic? Uh, second, quit. Let me go back to it. Fourteen point five five. What is my p-value? Point one zero. Round this to two to four decimal places. Well, eight rounds that to ten, which means that's a zero. We add one here, so that's where they get the ten forty. And again, it's the probability of getting this distribution if the null hypothesis is true. And because this is bigger than point, what is the graph? Again, it's always going to be the p-value is over here. So even on this type of test, so even the both, so both types of tests, we're always looking, you know, for a greater than. So, and then what is the alpha of 0 0.05? We're not rejecting because with a p with a p value of 0 0.10, that's bigger than 0 0.05, so we don't reject, and therefore we think that uh, there isn't enough evidence to say that they are. Um, not uh, they are dependent upon each other because like I said you could have more than one car so it's very you know because like if this was dependent we would see very few cars over here in large families and we would see very few cars over here in small families um, but because these are independent of each other based on this information uh, we reject the null hypothesis and that's what we're saying is that you know they are probably independent And then the next one is the same kind of thing, all right? And so this one here is one where you're going to have to check to, just to make sure that, because notice you have a lot of zeros. So are these things, five, you know, less than five? You know, it's not going to change your work here, but you do, would want to check that, all right? Um, it's 10 o'clock. Woo! I'll leave you those, because that way you, you can each play with one. And like I said, if you don't have... If you go to stat tests, and you don't see this GOF test, then you're going to have to do that thing by hand. You're going to have to. Oh, I, I deleted it. All right. Um, and I think. Hold on. Let me just get out of this. Uh, this so this one here looks like it would do it for you so we have our categories of whatever you know uh, red oh we had blue green yellow Orange, red, and then it asks you to put your observed and expected in, and so we could have done that, um, and then our level of significance, and we'll calculate it for you. So um, here, even with the homework one. Let me go back. Unfortunately, if there's only five, it's kind of hard to do the one with seven. Because the one we have is seven, so that's kind of a, that one won't really work. Uh, Okay, so here we can just put them in by count by commas. Oops. Separated by commas. I want that and I want this. One thirty-six, two thirty-nine, three and twenty-two. 
136, comma, 239, comma, three and 22. And then this one was 125.2, 224.4, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 
hold on, let me just change this here. So, so my mind is, it, it, when did it open? It became available on November 14th. So I want to just change that. That's fine. <laughs> and it's then uh, 16 days. I'm just adding a whole week. Yeah. So it's now due on Monday the 30th. So that gives you a whole nother week to, I realize some of you have probably already taken it, um, but if not, um, this gives you all of this week to, to do it. So you can, like the upcoming week, so you can do it after Thanksgiving. And we're not here on Saturday. We have no class next Saturday. I mean, I have no class ever, but um, you know, like I tell my, like, uh, like uh, the the joke is, uh, how do you know if you have Corona? You don't have a sense of taste, and then you look. Well, look how I'm dressed. I must have. I've never had taste, so um, I couldn't have lost it. Uh, but we don't have class on Saturday, next Saturday. You know, so you can sleep in and take the test. Uh, no class next week. Yes, correct. I did mine last night. Oh well, I, like I I just saw that it was due this week, and I was like, oh wait a minute, let me move it. But that's okay if you. How'd you do, Leslie? Good? Uh, one wrong. Yeah. So, you know, you're, you're, you're good. So I wouldn't worry about it. Um, nice job. Um, but that just gives people like the, I'm just giving you guys, you know, an extra time to, to work on that one. Um, and then uh, what is, so next week we are off. The, the week after that, we're going to do chapter 13, which is, um, uh, ANOVA tests. So I do want you to um, collect some data for me. So in weekly work, chapter 13, we have a this quiz here. Uh, I just want you to give it to five people. Um, I realize it's going to be hard because, you know, we can't have more than, you know, five people in our house So um, at Thanksgiving. So if you can't, I already have a whole bunch of them, but it just asks their age. And then it asks them, you know, who are these people in random order? And so they come through and um, answer them. And, you know, people get most of them right. Uh, and although they tend to get this one wrong, uh, um, but, and this one they get wrong, that one they know, that one they get wrong, this one they get wrong, uh, they tend to know her, um, older people tend to know her, younger people don't, um, they don't, may, uh, younger kids may not know who that is. They'll know who that is. Nobody knows who this guy is. Oh, he went back. Uh, people don't necessarily remember who, who don't know who this guy is. They'll know who her, she is. They don't know who he is. Um, they'll know who she is probably. Uh, some people will know her, and most people will know her. But so it's just who is this person? And it just randomly – you just have to go through and, and – it's just a multiple choice. So if you can get five people, that'd be great because then we can, um, like, here's all the responses. Like, I have lots of them. So, um, and then we'll do an ANOVA test based upon age groups and how many, the average number of things that they got right. So we'll look to see, uh, we'll break it up and go, all right, and how did each group do and see is there a, um, uh, significant difference. And you'll notice that very few people did poorly on this. You know, um, two, three, four people got less than half of them right. You know, that's it. <laughs> and 20 and five people got them all right. So, um, so those are, you know, and we have 155 of them and we're just, collect I'm just collecting them from semester to semester. So that way we, in case something like this happens where we can't, get anybody or people forget, I still have plenty of responses. So if you don't get them, that's fine, but um, I'd like to 
try to get at least at least you take it you know um, maybe somebody else in your house you know just try to get we're trying to get different age groups to see how they do on, on who these people are okay so that's your assignment for um, over the holiday break is to uh, find out how well people know people from the 20th century all righty I'm going to stop recording.